Hey, good morning everybody. Jim Bull back at you with uh, Proverbs chapter number 11. And we're continuing on with the words of Solomon here from things that he learned from his father through God and just reinforcing wisdom. A lot of this stuff seems like we've spoken about already, but isn't it the way we learn? Repetition. We have to be uh, told over and over and over again, or we have to go through things over and over again to get it to sink into our skulls sometimes. And again, I'll go back to me, Jim Boy. Yeah, yeah, I got a, I got a, hmm, too many of that other stuff way back in the day, you know, so that didn't help. But anyhow, uh, we go through it over and over and over, and hopefully we learn from it and, and do what we can. So I'm going to jump right in. It's a long chapter. Again, uh, chapter number 11, Proverbs. The Lord abhors dishonest scales but accurate weights are his delight so here they're referring to measuring systems back in the day uh, I had to look up the word abhors you know I have didn't do much school ninth grade tenth grade I was out of there but anyhow abhors I looked it up hate personified so the Lord already told us that he hates dishonesty here he talks about the Lord abhors dishonest scales hate personified Verse 2, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. So, pride, huge subject, and we all want to be proud of our accomplishments, right? We want to be proud of our children, we want to be proud of our spouses, we want to be proud of our neighbors, whoever. That's all good, I think, in my eyes it's good. Here it says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. I'm going to say that I think it's okay to be proud of your accomplishments because you work hard and you achieve things but I'm gonna say uh, be careful about boasting about it and getting in people's faces about it I did this I did that nobody cares man they don't care about you they care I shouldn't say nobody cares most people only care about themselves I'm trying to be no I'm not even trying to be politically correct because I'm not about all that either but I'm trying to bring it back on me so uh, two talks about pride. Verse 3, the integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity, doing things over and over again. Wealth is worthless in the day of the wrath. When you're gone, you can't take it with you, but the righteous delivers, righteousness delivers us from death. So here I'm taking the Lord saying that it's better to be righteous and have wisdom than it is to have money. Uh, the righteousness of the blameless make a straight way for them, but the wicked are brought down by their own wickedness. Looked at my footnotes here because that kind of threw me a little bit. The righteousness of the blameless makes a straight way for them. Self-explanatory, I guess, for someone smarter than me. But it, uh, footnotes talks about reaching your goals. Easier to reach your goals. And uh, goes on and on about being righteous. Uh, different parables here. When a wicked man dies, his hope perishes. All he expected from his power comes to nothing. And trust me, I'm not just overlooking these saying they have no importance. Please read through them, gain what you can from them. I'm just trying to keep the video a little shorter. So I'm going to put the verses again uh, inside the comment section. Again, I'm doing a different recording device here with my webcam, trying to be able to save some of this stuff that I'm doing. The iPhone, I'm losing my information, or it's harder to transfer, but anyhow, it doesn't matter. Uh, verse 9, with his mouth the godless destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge, the righteous escape. And I'll go back to that mouth thing again I talked about yesterday, using your ears more than your mouth. Probably gets you a little further ahead in life. Uh, this talks about slander, gossip, things like that. With the, his mouth, the godless destroys his neighbor. Uh, it's okay to talk to your neighbors, by all means, but be careful with what you're saying and, and use the wisdom that you obtain from God. Uh, when the righteous prosper, this is verse number 10. When the righteous prosper, the city rejoices when the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. Now, I believe that there are more people out there that want good than want evil. Sorry, I needed to wet the whistle. I think there's more people out there who enjoy good. They want to be safe. They want to know that their kids can go to school and travel around. I mean, when I was a kid, we are walking the streets going for blocks away and no one's with us. We're six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. We're out all day. Today, you see a kid walking along a city street, you're like, ah, where are his parents? What are they thinking? You know? The world's changed a lot. Uh, so, I think the majority still want to see the good. But, I don't think the, the, the majority of the people, education, the proper education has been taken from us. They want us to know this 
whatever kind of math they're doing now. Core math is it called? Parents help me out. I don't know. Crazy stuff. And yeah, you can get 2 plus 2 equals 10. You can make something up and get to that. 2 plus 2 equals 4. But I think that people don't know where to find the proper wisdom, the proper goodness. Share this stuff with your peeps, man. Share it around. The, the wisdom that's in Proverbs in this entire Bible. Greatest book on success ever written. Share this information. Don't be afraid to share it. Let people know what's here. We need to re-educate our nation, our world, because we're going the wrong way. I'm going on a tangent, but please share. I don't think I think people will want good, but the, their version of good isn't always correct either. And I know you'll ask me what makes you think your version of good is right. It comes down to opinions and think about it. Just think about it. That's all I'm asking. Just think about it. Let's go on. Uh, I jump down here to verse 14. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but many advisors make victory sure. And it made me think of our current government, and maybe not necessarily this government, maybe the government from 10 years ago, or even 15 or 20 or 5 years ago. I'm not telling you who to pick, or you know, I think a lot of us are on the same page. But I'm telling you that be careful. I think this verse re refers to be careful who you're hanging around, who you're getting your guidance from. For lack of guidance, a nation falls. Our administrations aren't looking to God for guidance. Okay? Many advisors make victory sure. Their advisors aren't looking to God for guidance. Man, one of my prayers, one of my frequent prayers is I pray for the leaders of the world to seek God in their decisions. I'd ask you to share that prayer with me. Verse 15. He who puts up security for another will surely suffer, but whoever refuses to strike hands and pledge is safe talked about this a couple chapters ago talks about I looked at my footnotes again covering someone else's debt hmm. we all want to help others there's other great ways you can help others I believe that uh, debt is a man killer too a lady killer too you know we found that out the hard way a couple years ago we were building this business and making all this money and all of a sudden BAM hmm. can any of you relate okay we all know what the outcome is, all right? We went to cash, man. The Chinese payment plan. One a lump of sum. One a lump of sum. <laughs> Think about that. Don't guarantee anyone else's debt. Don't guarantee anyone else's promises. Don't speak for anyone else, I guess, is really what I'm pulling out of this verse here. Moving on. I come down. Uh, lots of good stuff in between there. Talks about being righteous, being wicked what's going to happen. I move on to verse 24 is where my next note is. One man gives freely yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly but comes to poverty. A generous man will prosper but, but he a generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. People curse the man who hoards grain but blessing crowns him who is willing to sell. This goes back to giving we talked about this. I talked about this a little bit earlier about how I decided to give when I didn't have anything to give or I didn't think I had anything to give and it worked out for me. Okay. One man gives freely yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly but comes to poverty and it's just an old parable. You got to give to receive. It's true. You can't hoard up what you got, man. You got to you got to share it. You got to pass it around. And that could, I'm not even talking about money. I am talking about money, but it, it could be your knowledge, your wealth. It's like knowing about this wisdom and not telling somebody about it. For too many years, I've kept quiet about things that I know, things that I've learned along the way. And trust me, I learned the hard way, man. I was like, I had no, no guidance growing up. I had a father who was, I don't want to blame anything on my dad, but I had a father who was a drunk, taught me how to drink and smoke by the time I was 12 and all he ever told me was your dumb butt is just gonna end up in jail if you don't quit what you're doing now how am I gonna learn anything from that okay over and over again your dumb is gonna end up in jail if you don't quit doing what you're doing how am I gonna learn anything okay share what you know people you all know great information you all know good information please share it around one man gives freely yet gains even more God will bless you greatly moving on uh, that's the last thing I had from this chapter that really jumped out at me, and I don't mean to yell at anybody, sorry. <laughs> I get wound up, you know, get excited. It's good, right? 
So uh, on down through, again, it's just uh, verse 29, he who brings trouble on his family will inherit only wind, and the fool will be servant to the wise. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. If the righteous receive their due on earth, how much more the ungodly, the sinner? That's the last verse in this chapter, verse 31. If the righteous receive their due on earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner? And I take that meaning that if you do good or you do wisely, I hate using the word good. You can't be good enough, okay? If you, if you make the right decisions based on these Proverbs, based on the teachings of God, the information that's in this Bible, you're going to receive your due. On the other hand, if you don't, how much more the ungodly and the sinner, how much the Lord's going to triple, double, whipple, triple, flipple the bad stuff on you. So there you have it. We got chapter 11, Proverbs, Motocross for Christ, August Challenge. I thank you all for following along. This has been fun. We're going to keep after it. Oh, and one uh, new news coming out. Uh, I'm going to, I talked about sharing. I've decided that uh, I need to share what I know or what I believe to know. And uh, I hope you're all enjoying this. But uh, starting the end of August uh, at the Mama Ray series, we're going to be out there. I'm going to be out there sharing a message on Saturday nights. A uh, little testimony, a little uh, biblical. Uh, I, I want to invite you all to come out. There will be more coming out on that later. But please spread the word. Jim Bull going to be coming around on Saturday nights. And we'll be doing a prayer Sunday morning at Riders Meeting. So I hope you all will partake in that. Partake in that. Uh, we love you guys. We'll catch you later. Have a great day.